This is the Scary, scary Movie, movie Clubcast. Club Live from the Clubhouse is Scary Movie Clubcast. This is Nadine, Megan, Amanda, and Nathan. Nathan is with us tonight, special. He is a comic here in Richmond, Nathan Carlson, and he has shown us his favorite movie, which is Dog Soldiers. So that's what we watched tonight and what we're going to give you our review of. Uh, This is the biggest podcast I've ever been on. (laughs) And Amanda is going to give us our summary. Dog Soldiers is a movie about a group of Army Reserve type soldiers in the woods who come across a pack of werewolves and they have to survive the night. So, since this was Nathan's favorite horror movie, and I mean, it's just your favorite, like, overall movie, right? It is, yeah. Nice. So, Nathan is actually going to give us the fun facts, which is nice, because it means me and I don't have to do any work for this episode. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Some notable things that they change between the final version and the first screening of the film is that initially, in the tent scene, they actually had nudity right in the beginning of the first, but they decided the breast was too distracting and took it out, which is, like, the opposite (laughs) Of every horror movie ever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it was, like, right in the beginning. Yeah. So, like, if you're if you're curious at all, if you're going to, like, walk people right in the start, like, I could see being like, yeah, maybe, maybe it's okay. Uh, also, another odd thing, initially, Captain Ryan did not shoot the dog. Mm-hmm. So he did. shouldn't have shot the dog. Personal opinion. <laughs> weird. What a hot take. <laughs> hot take. <laughs> Who wants the dog to live, you weirdo? <laughs> Poor precious puppy dog. Oh, man. Uh, the producers did hate that particular dog. Apparently, it attacked both of them. Oh, oh. Mm-hmm. So, so that, that was like that's why, why they. Maybe that's murdered. why they wrote in. They're yeah. like, fine. <laughs> You're getting cut. One thing they wanted to focus on in general is they wanted to stay away from CGI uh, because they're like, we're not going to do better CGI. Mm-hmm. Than other, I think Amanda, you talked about if it's not as good as Jurassic Park, yeah, then why bother? Why bother? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, if you can't. Nathan's quoting us back to us from the podcast. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> Am I not supposed to reference previous? No, podcasts? no, you are. It's <laughs> just we're yeah, it's like fun. <laughs> it's just never happened to us before. <laughs> also, they didn't want to do a transformation scene because they're like, we're not going to do a better one than American Werewolf or, exactly. or other transformation scenes. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were like, eyes, teeth, nails, done. Yes. Yeah, we're going to put some contacts in. We're going to do some press on nails. And that's when they fall to the ground. The camera can't possibly follow them to the ground. <laughs> that's crazy talk. Would you run over there behind the table and see what was going on? Well, I was like, to murder person. them? <laughs> yes. Because that's the moment yes. that you kill that is, is mid transformation. Ultimate weakness. It, mm. Yes, truly. The movie is actually full of references to other horror. The soldier Bruce is named after Bruce Campbell. Sergeant Wells is actually Harry G. Wells. That's an H.G. Wells. When Spoon goes up the stairs, he says, uh, Little Pigs, Little Pigs, in reference to The Shining. Mm. The There is no Spoon. That's like the most common reference that people get. I guess, uh, that's from The Matrix, mm-hmm. when Neo is talking to the little kid right before he goes to the Oracle. The propane cylinder falling down is actually a reference to Jaws. Uh, right when, uh, when it almost hits Brody. Is that your favorite movie? It is. Okay. It is, yeah. I remember that was in your list. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not supposed to mention previous podcasts. No, you can. No one said you couldn't. You're such a water sign. You can't say anything to this guy without him, like, I don't, it. I don't know if I'm a water sign, though, because you haven't done my Star Trek yet. No, your sun sign is a water sign. That's not going to change. <laughs> see. Oh, the uh, family picture of the people in the cabin... That was actually just a picture of the crew. Oh, um, cute. Uh, Sean Pertwee, the guy that plays Sergeant Wells, uh, took the, the acting seriously enough that all the guys hung out and excluded the guy that plays Captain Ryan from anything that was happening on set. Like, he oh. just had to go eat lunch by himself. I don't oh. like that. <laughs> That's not right. Uh, when they had originally planned to uh, put, like, a professional musician recording of the song that Megan plays instead of... <laughs> the way she plays the piano, but when it came out all clunky, they actually liked it a lot more with the uh, the mistakes and whatnot. Yeah, I did like that part. That part was done a lot. But yeah. When the dog is pulling on the bandages in screening, that came up very commonly as people thinking it was the guts. Mm-hmm. And they actually used uh, sausages prolifically in the movie, like actual sausages. Yeah, I mean, there was a hefty sausage budget. Yes. yes. <laughs> like, it was we everywhere. Him. We better put them in. Yeah. <laughs> There was a little bit of conflict because it was an American company financing a British film. And so like Sergeant Wells kept using the C word. And they were like, oh. look, you can't. I know that's not as big of a deal to you, but you can't do that for American audiences. He kept yelling it a lot when they were sticking the werewolf forearm with a knife. 
and the Kentucky to do uh, takes. And I guess that's the time you say that. Mm -hmm. The majority of it was actually filmed in Luxembourg on the that's Duke nice. of Luxembourg's land. Really cool spot where they're walking through the uh, like stone cliffs and stuff like that. That was all on Duke's land. I've been to Luxembourg. Eddie Oswald, the guy that uh, he tells the story about triggering the anti-tank mine, mm -hmm. that reference appears in multiple Neil Marshall movies, including The Descent. Oh. When they first come across the old mining equipment, when they find out like oh someone's been in the cave before, the helmet that they come across has uh, Oswald stamped into mm -hmm. it. So he throws a nod to Eddie Oswald. In like every movie that he does, you've seen The Descent. Oh, is yeah. That correct? Okay. And he does another weird thing in uh, like The Werewolves and then The Critters in The Descent. He always hires dancers. You to, can tell. Yeah, to play his evil <laughs> I creatures. I mean, it's yes. so obvious. Yes, when they're coming into the, you know, when they're coming in the window with so much flourish. Yes. <laughs> A little much. <laughs> the, the marketing nightmare. Of this film is kind of funny. I don't, I don't know if anybody was looking at the case, but it's basically like a horror movie word salad. They just put every title of every action or horror movie <laughs> on it. Jaws, but, Aliens, and Predator with the werewolf twist. Oh, and then from the producers of Hellraiser. Because it doesn't remind me of not even one of them. No, it doesn't. No. It's not like related it's, to any it's of It's good. Yeah, it just doesn't have anything to do with that. Interesting. But uh, they, they argued back and forth about the two titles, and they were either going to go with Dog Soldiers the incredibly inventive Night of the Werewolves. And they decided to, to settle on dog soldiers. One good decision that they had is they were going to make the original tagline what Captain Ryan says initially when he's yelling, there was only supposed to be one. But they decided mm -hmm. to scrap that and just go with Jaws, Alien, and Predator with a werewolf twist. Mm. <laughs> Bold statement on the back here. Oh, you have to read okay. them. <laughs> one of the most explosive and purely enjoyable horror, move, horror debuts since The Evil Dead. Damn. From Total Film. I know. <laughs> Quite a statement. <laughs> yeah. Which I'm sure Evil Dead was a club favorite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we haven't watched the Evil Dead as the original one as a club. Oh, yeah, not the original. Yeah. Well, if you've seen the second one, you've seen the first one. Yeah. Okay. So, because it is my favorite movie, my, my brother and I quote it a lot, and one of our favorite things to do is when we're in some place that's quiet and it's not appropriate to talk, one of us will whisper to the other. I'm in the closet, which is what the sergeant says to Coop when they're both in two different yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Cool. Those are my fun facts. Okay. Was the thing about you and your brother a fun fact? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, it is a fact. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing that happens. Oh, man. Thank you so much for getting those fun facts for us, Nathan. Those were great. So now we talk about scares, which this movie is kind of light. Or I would say lighter on. Yeah. I think it's because it's, like, very action-heavy. Yes. Yeah. I'd say the thing that actually did jump scare me was the cow falling <laughs> from the cliff yeah, or I wherever it came part. from. <laughs> that part was so funny. I would say, I'm, I wouldn't say, like, a scare in a traditional sense, but something that, like, caught me off guard that I wasn't expecting was when he had jump-started the truck initially in the, like, garage and he turned on the lights, and then there was the werewolf. He had been chilling in that garage the whole time, mm -hmm. and he had no idea. He got into the car and jump started yeah. it, and none the wiser <laughs> that he's just sitting there eating his friend. Slow. <laughs> yeah. No, the guy was still alive. Yeah. Which, I mean, I guess in this movie's time, it had only been a couple minutes. But, you yeah. know, <laughs> mere seconds. Yeah, mere seconds. He could have made it until dawn. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, if he had, if they had left him a little bit, he would have turned into one of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I would say probably the only moment that maybe I felt, like, pressed at all was when they were, like, in the car, and then the werewolf jumped on top. And it, just that, like... There were a few seconds before someone actually took any action, any real action. Those guys who were like kicking it, that was so funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that part was. I, but again, is it just wasn't like heavy on scares, but it doesn't right. it's not good. Yeah. Nathan, what was your? Oh yeah, scare? it's it's definitely not a big jump scare type movie. Really, the only the only scare I would think of is the cow uh, mm -hmm. falling down. That that's one that that's really the only jump that yeah. I think of. You can't repeat. Amanda took. Oh no! You gotta um, think yeah, you gotta think yeah. Well, the other scare. That's Amanda's scare. Now. Sorry, sorry. See, I don't know the rules. Uh, well, 
on all those episodes should, you, you listen know, to, did you ever rules. hear any yeah. of us repeat? I should have taken notes. If, I, if, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm quoting the podcast, you're right, I shouldn't have the rules. Um, it's adjacent to Megan's, though, but I like the breath uh, behind Joel mm-hmm. when, he, uh, when he stops the rubber. With your the big PA smoke with machine. Smoke machine. Yeah, yeah. Big smoke machine. <laughs> big smoke machine and uh, arterial squirt gun spray on the windshield. I'm a big fan of both. Nice, nice. Those were great. So now we can talk about laughs, which is a lot more options mm-hmm. in my opinion. Mm-hmm. See, I hate this. I'm, I'm going to go back to the first like, thing that I laughed at. Yeah. The man who impaled himself. So good. <laughs> that was some cinematic perfection out there. <laughs> that was very enjoyable. He just runs into the woods, and then all of a sudden there's a tree sticking out, and he fully impales himself. There's like a good six inches of tree behind him. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even think that is physically <laughs> possible. No. <to> do. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> Uh, I really enjoy when Spoon is hammering the door shut and the werewolf reaches through the mail slot and he starts hammering on the door. <laughs> yes. I know, I did love, like, the sounds of that. It's like, doop, 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 doop. That was fun. I also love, like you said, when they're just hammering the door. Like, yeah, there's, there's no nails. No nails. Yeah. Like, Gotta close it, guys. <laughs> I did enjoy when Spoon was in the kitchen fighting the werewolf and he was like, I'm just gonna throw every single object in this kitchen, regardless that it's not effective in any type of way, but every plate and every pot and everything, I'm just gonna throw it and destroy this kitchen. Yes. That was funny. So my favorite laugh is actually Amanda's favorite scare. (laughs) That cow falling was so funny to me. (laughs) It was just so good. So unexpected. And their reaction. (laughs) You're shooting blanks. (laughs) So now we talk about our least favorite parts. Oh, I know mine. What? I hated when the woman was like that time of the month. Such a oh, cliched, her, the, sexist joke. Her whole like monologue at the end, garbage. Yeah. Throw it out. <laughs> it, 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 like if you were, if there was any point in the movie when you were like, "Is this written by a man?" It's right then when yeah, you're, you're like, like, "This yeah. is written." Yeah, okay, here we go. Okay. <laughs> no need to read Who it. Who broke at up the with end. you? <laughs> So my least favorite part is when they're walking on patrol and whistling. <laughs> it really bothered me that they were whistling. Yeah. That part got him, but mm-hmm. I didn't care at all when they murdered the dog. <laughs> yeah, that is my least favorite part. The why, why the dog had to be murdered at the beginning? It didn't further the plot in any way. Mm-hmm. It was for no reason. To show that Just, that guy was hard. He's bad. Okay, I already <laughs> knew he was an asshole. I didn't need <laughs> I didn't need you to shoot a dog to prove the point. I will say one thing I didn't like about the whistling scene is that they weren't whistling a tune I'd ever heard. Like, it wasn't... They're Irish. I know. I don't care. (laughs) Amanda should know it. I should still know it. (laughs) It's like, I am known for knowing Irish folk songs. It it should have been the Star of the County Down or something. Something recognizable. Yeah. Probably the part where they decided they were like, they had to go to the car, but then they were like, but let's jump out the second story windows for no reason. I could not understand that. Uh, Do you have an they, opinion? Because you've uh, seen I it multiple times. The ground floor was all nailed up with the ineffective boards. I think that's why they had to jump out the. Uh, Super the ineffective, story. though. I mean, very ineffective. Well, yes, werewolves often jump through the boards. Yeah, like it's nothing. Like it was paper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so all you've done is make it so that you cannot get out that's and run. That's true. And then on the second story, you have a rope going down anyways, and also they don't even need it. They were just, yeah. like, jumping. Yeah. Well, he did use it. And they, yeah, well, the guy, oh, the, the werewolf, werewolf, the werewolf yeah, yeah, did yeah. use yeah. it because they had to cut the rope really fast. Very Not true. very fast, though. No. But. Even also, though those werewolves were, like, ten fall. feet tall. Yeah, those werewolves were insanely tall. They and really also, like, angles. you've already had that werewolf, like, up in that room before. I just don't. Yeah, a lot of what they did didn't make sense. But, I mean, that's how it is in a horror movie. Mm-hmm. Which we didn't talk about this during least favorite parts too, but there were like a few, you know, things that didn't make like logical sense, like how yes. the house it completely exploded after the gas had been let out for like forty five seconds. Yeah, it exploded <laughs> like it was made out of TNT. Yes. <laughs> and also, I've always thought it was sort of a weak plot point the fact that Megan, different Megan, werewolf Megan, not yes. not Club Megan, that she had been infected prior but turned so much later. Yeah. Than you know, like Wells or yes, Captain Ryan. Yeah, I think they could have explained it better. Like maybe like 
you don't go full werewolf until you reach like a certain age and maybe that was like her birthday or so, I don't know. I like, thought that she already like was a werewolf. Well that's the thing but that she didn't turn yeah, at the same time that the, the, the rest of the family, family turned. I think that it like partially has to do with like stress or something right or like anger because all the people every time they turned was like high pressure moments. But she was stressed when she was leaving because she was trying to flee she knew she was going to be turning and that's why she ran into them on the road is because she was trying to get away from her family yeah get away and leave yeah i mean it's not explained it's yes no. that's how it's I, a plot I, hole for i took yeah. it as like yeah. yeah that they almost have some choice like not like choice but that it's not because i'd even try to think of it as maybe she got infected when she cut herself uh, on the broken glass of the window but that doesn't yeah. follow with anything else that she says that's almost like the writer got broken up with mid writing it and was like i hate women <laughs> yeah <probably. laughs> and he was uh, like how can i write it so that she calls herself the b-word <laughs> yeah <laughs> they did cut a tremendous amount of backstory for all the characters mm-hmm. and there is apparently a whole storyline about cooper having like some horrible problem with women uh, but that was all cut, mm-hmm. so then it just seems like yep. he is just waving a rabbit's foot at her and doesn't like her. I mean, that's <laughs> one of his main fears. Yes. Spiders and women. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what were our favorite parts overall? I liked how gory it was. I like. I always appreciate it when people don't step back from that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, if something's bloody, be bloody. Yeah, Man, that disemboweled guy. <laughs> <laughs> so Which, I mean, once there were magical werewolf flowers in play, I guess it's fine. Yeah, but, but like... Also, how dead does the werewolf have to kill you before, like, for you to actually be dead? Do they have to consume you? Like, I don't... I don't... Eat your heart, maybe? I, maybe. I mean, I think Spoon was... Yeah, dead, they definitely dead. got Spoon. <laughs> yeah. But then actually the bodies See, in the basement, a lot of them, it seems like it's... Most of the bodies left. Yeah. So and we they were dead. Maybe you gotta... They were dead. Maybe you have to, like, yeah, rip off, like, were... vital chunks, like, take off an arm or... A whole organ has to come out, like, all the way. That's the fun of this movie, is we get to make up the rules. Because <laughs> yeah. they didn't make up any. <laughs> they didn't tell us explicitly what they were. <laughs> we don't know if blowing them up works. Mm-hmm. They could be fun. No, I guess it did work when Wells blows up the house. Although, I mean, really, we're just supposed to believe that it works. Yeah. Because we all know. That's true. They could have rallied yeah. afterwards. Whenever you go camping now, do you bring um, a little silver <laughs> letter, letter opener with you? I always yeah. have my letter opener. <laughs> no, I figure if if I run into three or four werewolves, that's it's just, I don't think the letter opener oh, is so going to Oh, so that's the limit of your arrogance? That's the, yeah. like, yeah. three to four <laughs> werewolves, okay, yes. you got me. Yes, yeah, so if there's a werewolf. <laughs> One-on-one situation, look out. No. no. <laughs> I've heard Nathan say things like, as if he thinks that he can take a black bear. <laughs> <laughs> I said as if like it's not it's not he did not say I could take a black bear but it was a black bear uh, I don't say my favorite part it's just the character spoons he just seemed fun <laughs> just like, I was like he seemed like an Aries I feel like I could make some bad mistakes with him <laughs> he was just going hog wild just being dumb I yeah it's like dummy. He, he doesn't even care that it's werewolves he's no. just enjoying the yeah. entire situation he he's a, loves chaos. I can tell. Did you do your favorite part yet, my book? I have not done mine. I think I liked. It's more like not as specific, more of a general. But I like towards the end when the werewolves are in the house and they've all like split up, and you've got the one guy in the bathroom and the one in the closet, and they're trying to get to each other while also you know keep the werewolves who are trying to get through the door at them. I don't know. I just, I felt like it was an enjoyable part where, you know, we spent a lot of the movie with them being outside and attacking kind of like one-on-one. It was like Mm -hmm. one werewolf would kind of attack at a time. But this, it was like they were all coming. Yeah. And converging. Well, you know what I would not be in shock about is if the person had considered going in different directions and then changed their mind because... I do feel like there were weird looks between the female and the, like, who was it? Like, the captain guy who they were mm-hmm. against or whatever. Well, because they had worked was. together previously. The whole reason that she was there in the Glen was that she was hired by his team uh, to come in as, like, the zoologist expert. And she ended up getting scratched okay. or bitten or whatever. And that's how she got stuck with that family. Oh, okay. That's why she becomes less and less helpful. When she found them initially, she's like, oh, you're here to rescue me. And that's why she gets kind of, like, progressively Uh, more upset and less helpful to them overall. Mm, Yes. Okay. 
I will say, guys, watching this movie, they had heavy accents. And, and you know us, we'd be talking during movies. <laughs> <laughs> and all the accents are so different, too. So it's, it's not even like you can lock onto a pattern of speech or something like that. They're all over the place. And the guy with the most posh accent that you pointed out, he was actually a truck driver. And started, <laughs> started acting very late in life. Hilarious. Like, puts on airs. <laughs> he also speaks, like, the least of anyone. Uh, your favorite answer? Yeah, I guess my favorite part. I have to give a lot of creativity points to the werewolf with the sword through his back, pulling the guy's head and shoving the sword into his mouth. Uh, that's that like part a pretty, was great. That's a pretty mm-hmm. wild one. Favorite, though? It's hard not to pick Spoon. Just throwing everything in the kitchen at the werewolf. But but yeah, for creativity points, I have to do uh, werewolf sword in the mouth. Yeah, that was a good one. What do we think of the plot, like, overall? It's kind of interesting. Like, an interesting thing is on, like, the um, three little bears, or the three bears, <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. and gold and three bears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of vibe, because it's like, I mean, I picked up on it right away. Like, when they walk in the house, I'm like, this is the werewolf's house. You don't just leave a meal here. You're like, oh... Full moon again. Gotta go. Yeah, Amanda, Man, I love Amanda gets everything right away. I love how mad she was, too. Like, that's my soup. <laughs> so you can't just eat my soup. It's like, I mean, also, though, you left your soup on, like, on the stove. Well, and it was people yeah, soup. Like, yes. Yeah. They were all eating people soup. But why, why is she eating people soup when she's not? Because so she's I guess, a werewolf. That's just how I, I just do. don't think of werewolves as doing their werewolf things when they're in their people form. Yeah. That's just a cannibal. That's not a werewolf. That's, you're but just they a have the bodies down. Yeah. Yeah. And the so these are yeah. special hybrid werewolf cannibals. Not the part time tortured souls that we're used to. See, he should have gone for the bread. He really should have. They left relative. the bread untouched. Crazy. Like idiots. <laughs> they never actually made their tea, even though they had hours. I know. Dennis. Anyways, back to the plot. Mm. I would say there are definitely some holes. <laughs> and that bothered me a bit just because it was like I wanted more explanation than they were giving me it was like it was kind of like I had to fill in those gaps myself mm. but even when I filled them in I was like this don't really make sense yeah you know which is vaguely ironic because then in other parts it was like overly expository like just saying (laughs) things that i'm like i know that you really want to get this point across but it should either be implied enough that we just get it or you need to just leave it like all like the woman's monologue it's like listen either you like (laughs) did this or you didn't like you can't just say all these things and have that be like yeah also them like having some weird chemistry came out of nowhere i was like (laughs) you have not built this up in any way but they're like, she's a woman, he's the best looking man. <laughs> Duh. Man is like, that's how I like a romance. <laughs> I mean, you don't get to be on a, essentially a hospital soap without being the best looking character in a B movie. <laughs> yeah, you guys, just random fun fact for while we were watching. I was like, oh, that guy is on Grey's Anatomy. And I couldn't remember his name, even though my sister in law has forced me to watch all of Grey's Anatomy. And Megan goes, oh, that's Owen. And then she's like, I've never seen the show. <laughs> which, which turned out to be not quite true, but still. <laughs> Didn't see any of the seasons that he was in. So I still have no explanation as to why I knew his name so readily. <laughs> Maybe from like teasers or something. Well, it's, it's important to keep said. track of dreamy guys no matter what the role. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Is that the wrong word to you? Oh, well, I just don't. I, I don't find him attractive in any way at all to me. But that's just me. Yeah, plot quality. Mostly fine. But yeah, but a couple things to address. Like, I totally agree with what Megan said. And then I know it is weird because there was like a lot of action. I probably could have done with some more character development, which I guess sounds like it was put in, but then hit the yeah, editing room floor, mm-hmm. which makes sense when a man's editing. And he's like the writer director. So all those things come so natural. Like, he already thinks all those things of the people. And mm-hmm. so it's harder for him to realize, like, oh, the audience doesn't know this. Yes. So you would have preferred they cut the one woman's backstory instead of her giving the whole monologue? I, or at least just cut the monologue. I, I, I the monologue. hated you could have the used monologue. Used so that bad. monologue time to give us backstory someplace else. Because you can't just, like, in a movie, you can't just have nothing and then just say this is what you've seen when you haven't seen it. Yeah. Like, 
Because they acted like as if they had sat down and had like several heart to heart during this night. conversation and about his love life. Yeah. And, women and... and I was like, mm, mm, mm. no, this is out of left field. And just the cliches. Ugh. <laughs> I know. I wonder how the guy who wrote and directed felt about it. Like, I wonder if watching it back, he was like, could have done better here. Or he was just nodding his head being like, yes, this is exactly what a woman would say. <laughs> Nathan, what did you think of the overall plot quality? I've watched it so many times that I've kind of filled in a lot of the plot holes mm-hmm. in my own mind. But I, the Megan not transforming is one that, that's real difficult for me to, to get over. So yeah, yeah. there's definitely, definitely a hole or two or five. <laughs> just five just five okay <laughs> so so in to you in your mind you think that that's like the very first time that she ever transforms no no i think she's transformed before i just don't understand how when everyone else is transforming in some cases within a handful of hours of actually being initially infected i don't understand how she would resist the transformation when yeah. everyone else is turning so fast including the family that she's been living with yeah especially since it it doesn't sound like she's been a werewolf for that long. Mm-hmm. You would think that maybe the family might have that kind of control if, like, they were born werewolves or if they became it, like, way early on. But she's just like, oh, it's been, like, two months, and now I can put it off. It's only two moons. It, well, it's, yeah. almost, it's almost like she decided, like, I'm not going to turn tonight. Yeah. You know, and then she's like, Ugh, okay, I will. Yeah. After my month long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the whole point, what was the whole point of her cutting her hand to begin with? To trick us? Was oh, no, they... she did it by accident when they dragged Terry out of the window. Uh, she touches yeah, the But why even put that in the movie? Why yeah, I mean, nothing. Yeah, they focused on it. It's been the movie. so much time. They, yeah, we focused on it for so long. Just like... Again, another point where we could have been filling in backstory. <laughs> just saying, cut that out, use it someplace else for backstory. <laughs> Is this the only one of this movie? Like, there's no, like, prequel or sequel or anything? There is a second, there is a Dog Soldiers 2, uh, but it's not made by Neil Marshall, as far as I know. It's not mm. really connected in any no. way. It's kind of like they just slapped mm. the, the name. I haven't seen it. Oh. You haven't seen it? No. Wow. I'm going to give it 3.5 high quality sausage links out of 5. I'm going to give it 3 sausage links. Yeah, I'm also giving it like. Three out of five sausage debt, because that just feels exactly yeah. right. It was not bad. Yeah, I mean, and definitely in terms of werewolf movies, it's probably one of the better ones. Yes, absolutely. It, it is very easy to bomb a werewolf movie. So easy, and this does not bomb. Yeah, but it could do better. Yeah, yeah. For me personally, I have to rank it as maximum sausage debt. I have to give it five out of five. Yes, sausage that's very debt. reasonable. I also feel like you all were very generous in your sausage debt rankings. <laughs> that's what I would have ranked it if you weren't here. Because I did, I laughed at several parts, and that's an easy way to get me. If I'm, like, having fun and laughing, yeah, yeah, then yeah. I'm enjoying myself. You did not want to see us when we're mad when we're watching a movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do get mad. If there had been any more, like, if the monologue, if there had been any more of that, <laughs> like, yeah, if yes. that had happened any multiple times or anything, yeah, it, it would have instilled, it, yeah, yeah, it would have gone way down. Yeah. But with the one time, I, I'll just take one entire point off What is that. the angriest club movie? I mean, we were so angry at Mr. Jones, but we might have been more angry at Rebirth, even though it wasn't as bad, but just because we were, like, doing it the second time. <laughs> okay, so I will give my quick, like, guess-ish from knowing Nathan. So he is a Scorpio. That part, like, I already know. Mm -hmm. I think that his moon sign probably is either fire or air Mm -hmm. because he does not seem to have the same, like, grudge tendencies that a normal water sign would have. Although he could be just faking it. We'll see. This will be the unmasking. Uh, (laughs) So, like, (laughs) so if I had to guess his moon sign, I would guess Aries. Because I do think that he likes to be in control, and so in Aries with the Scorpio, that would make sense. Rising sign, I would think, I lean either towards Taurus or Cancer. And and there is a part of me that thinks that either his rising or his moon sign is going to be water, because I really could see him being a double water, because he's so sensitive. But I would lean more towards, like, Cancer or Taurus. And I, I if I had to pick one, I would pick Taurus, because he seems to really like, like, taking care of people. Like how Guys for Club, he brought us, like, three different types of fancy drinks and all sorts of like baked goods love it (laughs) but he also can be a little stubborn so i would lean taurus 
Mm. Okay, give me your info. Are you ready? Yes. Birthday. November 21st, 1980. He's a cusper like Kate. Mm. Yeah. Sun Scorpio, we knew that. Yeah. Uh, moon? Taurus? Oh, okay. Um, what's your other one? Rising? Mm hmm. Pisces. Oh, so you were double water. Mm-hmm. I would not have thought Pisces. Man, Scorpio, Taurus, Pisces, such a, like, commitment-oriented person. Like, <laughs> like, just the type of person who's like, oh, well, that all tracks. it. That tracks. <laughs> <laughs> I've oh, been man. all in for a long time, and now I'm all out. Uh, he's heard me tell way too much about, like, astrology stuff. Do you want to explain, like, a little bit about Taurus and Pisces, too? Yeah, because I don't know any of... Them. Okay, well, a Taurus is loyal, possessive... Stubborn, the most known for being stubborn, but they do tend to like luxury a lot. Like they like to treat themselves. They're an earth sign, so they're very grounded. But they really like to be grounded in nice things. <laughs> um, he even does this crazy nice RV, and he refers to it as a van. <laughs> <laughs> it is a van. It's a it's a Ford van. Also, what what do you think is nice about it? I mean, it's clearly expensive. It has, like, a larger TV than I have in my bedroom. <laughs> like, it... <laughs> that, that TV was $20 off of Marketplace, though. Okay, that doesn't make it not nice. Price and value are different things. And then Pisces are kind of most known for being, like, very sensitive. They're, like, the baby of the star signs. <laughs> like, a literal, like, infant, easily hurt feelings. <laughs> yep. My brother is a Pisces. <laughs> and they're like... It's a struggle sometimes. <laughs> I would also say, too, that they're probably one of, the, like, the most, like, romantic in the Zodiac. Mm. Like, just, they are... They kind of have, like, rose-colored glasses on, and then they get upset when, like, things aren't exactly as they had, like, yes. dreamt it up to be. Mm. All right, thanks so much for listening in, guys. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Scary Movie Clubcast, and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. See you next movie night, and don't forget, there are... 28 days till Halloween. Bye. 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 <laughs>
unsuccessful. It was embarrassing for him. <laughs> 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 it was so much work for nothing. Cow tail? <laughs> Literal oh, skeletons so in the closet. <laughs> 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 it's like letter openers. Silver letter openers. Letter what a weird open. gift to give someone in the woods on your camping trip. Yeah, so you guys are just saying objects, man, and I got jokes. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I appreciate it, yours. But Nathan, yours was trash. You're a comic. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't remember. Is this out of five or out of ten? Out of five. Out of five. Okay. I don't know. So it's my Clearly, it's been too Nadine long. Nadine hates the number five. Yeah, I really hate it. I wish I had never agreed to it. No, my and now we're here. Yeah. <laughs> we're in it. I also would just like to rank out of ten. Like, I also just think that that makes a lot more sense. This, We're in it now. I know. I'm aware. You, <laughs> this is going in the fifth season, too, so it's, like, doubly... Uh, <laughs> <I know. laughs> are, are you into, like, numerology and stuff? No. You can simmer down with your trying to call me a witch for the second time this week. <laughs> no, I'm not into numerology. No, I said you were a soothsayer. The scripture verse that you sent me talked about <laughs> witches. <laughs> I just don't like the number five. I feel I'm glad no, that it makes you happy, I suppose. I feel no kind of way about any kind of number. But you do think from a logical standpoint that ranking out of 10. I'm not going to get in the middle of this. But you do. Right? I'm not. I mean, we're not going to change it. I'm just saying take my side. I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm just saying take my side. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not expressing any kind of opinion. It is well, a new season. Just so you know, to not express an opinion is for you to not take my side. So that's... I guess. I'm so taking that's how no side. Get, which is to not take my side. So that's fine. That's your choice. But I'll remember this forever. <laughs> forget all the nice things I've done for you and just remember this one time. You know, you'll be like, I don't remember the name of that crappy werewolf movie we watched, but I do remember that Megan did not take my side. <laughs> the betrayal. <laughs> Nathan, do you have anything else to share? About my Star Trek? Or the movie, or the podcast in general. Um, I just want you to know that when Alan Van was a guest on the podcast, he talked about what a good comedian I was. So. <laughs> that's what you have I to mean, it's too to. late now, but... <laughs> yeah, but that's not all he said. What are you implying? I don't know. Do you even... When you go to stir up chaos, do you even know what you're, like, hoping for? But I'm not trying to stir up chaos on the podcast. That wasn't in my Star Trek. I mean, no, so being a Scorpio. Scorpio. Oh, yeah, okay. that's the thank you. Thing. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's so nice to have backup. <laughs> this idiot doesn't believe all the time. <laughs> okay, so no one else has anything else to say, right? You're a great comedian. <laughs> <laughs> going straight in the freaking bloopers. <laughs>